Are housing prices done falling? For the last year, the dominant story in the real estate news industry has been the coming housing crash. We saw over and over again, every major news source talk about the inevitable coming of a housing crash like 2008, 2009. Now, as that has not happened, more and more have backed off of that. Prices have adjusted, but are they continuing to adjust or have we made the adjustment and now we're back being affected by other factors? That's the key question is where are we right now and then what does that mean about where we're going forward? We'll take a look at the data. As I always state, the two most important factors in the real estate market right now are mortgage rates and inventory. Let's take a look at those two factors first before we get started. Mortgage rates ended the, month, the week at 6.57%. Up a little less than a quarter percent from last week at 6.38, still below the monthly highs of 7%. We've been in this 6 to 7% bandwidth for all year pretty much. So last year we had the 2.53, we jumped up to 6.57, and we've been in that range ever since. And that's, I think, because the underlying, uh, underlying mortgage uh, uh, rate is reflected by the underlying inflation rate. We have the inflation rate at five to six to seven percent. The mortgage rate is going to be in that same ballpark. The other factor besides mortgage rates that's so critical is inventory. And where's inventory? Well, overall, inventory is still low, historically low. By all standards, it's lower than any time other than the pandemic uh, by about 50 percent. And so it means there's less houses available. What that tells us is that some sellers have decided not to sell. When they do come to the market, there are buyers available to buy them. In order for housing prices to go down, you have to have too many sellers causing them to compete by cutting their price. Clearly, at these inventory levels, that's not happening. And if you look in the micro market, for example, Los Angeles, we'll see that overall the markets continue to be a seller's market marginally at Altos Research has it at 40, it's been 40 to 41%. We look at the key factors, median list price staying about the same, price per square foot's been rising nonstop, days of market about the same or declining. So all the key factors indicate a pretty healthy market overall for real estate. So where are housing prices headed going forward? Well, let's take a look at the recent adjustment and that'll help us predict what's going forward. Here is the price changes um, month to month annualized by both the FHFA, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, and Case Show, which is a private company. And what you see is that for all of 2021, 22, significant price increases on a monthly basis and then you can see that in 2022, towards the end, it dropped a bit. That's the correction. And now we've been floating around a more, well, I don't say historic level, but certainly a lower level on the increase. And so what we're seeing now is housing prices have made a tremendous slowdown, like pumping of the brakes, and now crawling forward or maybe still slowing a little bit, depending on exactly where you are in the marketplace. So another way to look at this is comparing past crashes to the current correction. And Lance Lambert of Fortune Magazine does a great job of this. He plots out the current pandemic correction versus the early 1990s correction and the 2008 correction. Well, obviously the difference is the 2000s correction was prolonged over a period of time that allowed it to go down so dramatically, down 30% in some cases. So this has been a relatively short time period and you would need to have a longer period of correction in order to see the drop. But the reality is we really had the correction, as you saw in the last graph, concentrated in the last three or four or six months and seems to have slowed down. So this would suggest we've been through the correction, and unless there's some changing factors we'll get to, that that's not going to continue. Another amazing uh, uh, factor is to look at the current correction in context to the run-up in prices the last two years. You can see that when we started the pandemic, uh, we were here at this red number, and it went all the way up to the top number, so it was at 210, if you compare it to the year 2000. The value went from 100 to 210, or doubled. But from 210, it went all the way up to 300, and came back down a bit. But you can see we had tremendous appreciation in this time period, even with a correction, even corrects more, we still had tremendous appreciation and Rusty has been a fantastic investment. And that's the other key thing is so many people have profited by investing in property. Their memory is not losing, at least as of now, but their memory is as of winning. One thing is when you plot the data is very specific to certain states and market areas. For example, San Francisco 
had a tremendous, um, uh, had, had, a, had a solid um, run up, uh, but it is uh, corrected more than all the others combined of all the big cities, San Jose and San Francisco. So they had a nice correction, and those are two areas that are being hurt, and that's probably focus on the technology sector and the people had the chance to move out of there while maintaining those jobs. But you see almost all the other major cities, uh, they are still enjoying the pre-pandemic boom and even the adjustments, a small piece of that boom. And so when you take statistics, it's highly concentrated in these couple of areas. I think you could really say that one of the significant changes in our economy as people went out of Silicon Valley, when they can afford to work elsewhere uh, and maintain those salaries or even close to those salaries. And that's the dramatic effect in San Francisco, San Jose, the related areas to less degree Los Angeles. So what does that mean going forward? Well, let's take another uh, important statistic or important factor is the yield curve. And I've heard this discussed about, I understand the concept, but I found this great tool that really explains what it is and gives us a chance to look at it here. So if you look at a normal year curve, I go back to say January uh, 1st of 2022. What you'll notice is that interest rates, this is the money you would get if you invested with the United States. If you bought a treasury bill or bond in, in, you know, back in 2021, you get less than one tenth of 1% for a three month bond. But if you lent your money out to the US government for, oh, say 10 years, you get about 1.5%. If you did for 30 years, you get about 1.8%. But this is what we call a normal yield curve, where the longer out you go, the more um, uh, return you get. Now, let's, let's take a look at um, May 2022. It started to flip a little bit, where once you got out to three years, you got about the same interest rate. So what this is telling you is that Congress is saying, we don't know what's going to happen after three years. Uh, and we're really concerned about the short run, but we can't see out much past that. Then you go to the current yield curve, and this is what has investors so concerned, that you can put your money with a U.S. bond today and get 4.9% for four months. Now, the concern is what happens after the four months. If rates come back down, you have this money and you get a low rate of return. And for people who need a rate of return to live on or pay debt, that's a concern. You can see that just putting the money out long term gets you less than short run. And so that, that's encouraging investors to think short term with their capital. And that makes it harder then to look long term for building things, building businesses, building uh, office buildings, building facilities. You have to get rate of return more than the U.S. government. And if the U.S. government will pay you 5% now guaranteed, most people will be happy with that return. They're going to want to see 7, 8, 9% before they're consider anything better. That's why hard money loans and consumer loans, car loans have shot up so much because those tend to trade more shorter term. As a result, they have to get over this hurdle uh, for investors to consider doing business with them. So that was one big factor that's right now holding the market uh, and the rates being high as they are. The other factor is the, uh, regional banks. What you can see is there was, we, we know the story about um, uh, SVB Bank and Signature Bank, the second, third largest banks in America failing. And so there was a concern that it would spread to other regional banks. And you can see that the stock price of the regional banks dro uh, dropped tremendously, about 30% compared to the overall stock market. Meaning investors were saying, hey, I'd rather not hold regional banks. I want a 30% premium for the same kind of financials. And that was very intense back in mid-March, and that has leveled off a bit. And you see the lack of uh, range in this means that it settled in a bit. And while still regional banks are looked down on compared to other investments, the fear of it running away has slowed down, and it settled into this being the new normal. And so what does that mean in, in my mind? The new normal just means that uh, unless something new happens, rates will stay where they are. And based on that, home buyers are looking to buy houses and sellers are going to sell houses. Now, the good news is, I think all this news has been factored into the position as where we are today. The bad news is something new happens every day. I mean, look at the dramatic political news we had last week. We could easily have effects 
in our economy from any of those, China and Iran getting together, China and Russia getting together, who knows if there's any war coming up, political upheaval, all those, if they come to fruition, would dramatically change the market again, increasing risk and interest rates, making it harder. But in the meantime, the economy is big enough and successful enough for people making money where they're at. So what should you do? Well, it's always gets down to what's best for you. If you can afford the payment and lock in a great rate, there's a great chance to do that because over time, rates go up and down, but when they go down, you can relock it lower, relock it lower, and most homeowners have benefited tremendously over the last 30 years doing that. And if you have a home to sell because you need the cash, you need to downsize, you need to relocate, great time to do it. There's still limited inventory and plenty of buyers to, to buy properties. So if I can help, reach out. I'm on social media at Bill Gross EXP, or you can call or text me. My phone number is below, 310-210-0008. And as always, make today your best day ever. Thanks.